All right, what's up? What's going on, guys? Captain Monk here. Welcome to more League of Legends. This time around, we're playing some Elderwood Nocturne in the top lane. Now, of course, this is the new skin for Nocturne, and I want to show it to you guys here, but I also want to talk about why we're playing in the top lane. But first, I'll show you guys the recall, and then we'll dive into Nocturne and the meta that he stands in right now. But you guys can see here at the recall that he gets this little butterfly, and somehow it empowers it to become extra pink, maybe a little bit purple. I'm not so sure. That doesn't seem like, you know, Nocturne's usual kind of uh, theme, but I guess it's part of how Elderwood and him have kind of blended here. But uh, anyway, so we'll get, ourse we'll get ourselves here the uh, Corrupting Potion to start, the Warding Trinket, and head to the lane here. We're playing against the Jace top, I believe, but this might actually swap with the Kale. Who knows? Uh, we don't really know just yet. But for right now, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Pantheon. Or, sorry, not Pantheon. Uh, Nocturne here in the top lane. I made so many Pantheon videos in a row, I guess I'm just defaulting to saying Pantheon a lot, but... Uh, but yeah, so Nocturne top, you guys, in Platinum Plus gameplay in the whole world. Platinum Plus, 55% win rate on top lane with a 0.2% pick rate. This means that no one's playing it, and it's got a high win rate. Now, this could mean the people who are playing it are just super experienced with it, are doing really well, and that if you were to play with it as well and not know what you're doing, you might not have a 55% win rate. But the reality is as well is like, Nocturne's main role is jungle. That's what you'd expect. And it does look like we are against the Jace, actually, by the way. And, ooh, I barely missed that one. But um, all this to say, in the jungle, his win rate's 47.5%, which is pretty bad, actually. Uh, mid lane's, like, almost 51%, and I'm just going to wait to snipe these back to mage minions. There we go. Unfortunately, being against a Jace, we have to respect him early until we have enough uh, levels to kind of go at him and outplay him with our spell shield. And that kind of segues into why it is we're playing Nocturne top and why it's so good, actually, is uh, I would say that Nocturne top is really good against tanks because against tanks... He can just kill them a lot before they get tanky. Tankiness kind of takes some levels, right? Takes some items, you know, a few ruby crystals, that kind of stuff. And Nocturne can cheese them nice and early. But uh, it's also that against the champions like Jace, champions like Riven, things that are going to try and kill you, Aatrox, there are opportunities to outplay that are very choreographed. And what I mean by that is you can kind of see it coming. I mean, in Jace's case, the biggest thing I want to spell shield is his Shock Blast combo. And if I see him place the gate or I see the Shock Blast come my way, boom, I spell shield it. Provided I, you know, play it perfectly, which I'm not exactly expecting every single time, but I'm going to aim for perfection. And if I, oops, come a little short, like right there where I miss my E, uh, so be it. I've not understood why you can actually fear minions. I understand fearing jungle camps, but fearing minions? Like, why? Why would anybody do this? Uh, anyway, you can see how much mana is being used just in the wave clearing process, but we actually have a Gregus coming in for the gank here. Let's go ahead and drop the fear on this dude and see what he does. He's going to try and knock us away. No, he's going to actually use his Shock Blast on us. So he's not going to knock us away. And that's going to give us the all-in right here for the win. I'm sorry, Gregus. It wasn't quite here. But Jace just kind of ran it down. So no assist for the Gregus. But he will get the local XP from the kill. And that is all she wrote. So yeah, it was kind of a situation there where I think uh, Jace was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. Either he Shock Blasts me and tries to fight me and tries to win. Or he switches forms too early. And I'm actually going to try and save Gregus here. Good flash. Pantheon's flashing too. It's going to just body block a little bit here for Gregus. Get the fear off, maybe. Oh, maybe not quite in time. We have the fear now, though. All that move speed. One more auto attack. Oh my god, he got away. But wait, I have enough mana. I think we can do this. Oh, reach. Oh, it didn't quite reach. All right, let's go back. Oh, wait, Jace is here. Time to walk away. Ari with the big plays, though. And that was, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, walk into me here. What are you doing? All right, Ari just wants to die, apparently. <laughs> I mean, if you want me to save you, you have to walk into me so I can actually auto-attack him. <laughs> All right, well, this is probably as good a moment as any to mention if you guys are enjoying the game here so far. Don't hesitate to drop that like rating, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. We're going to go back here and work towards our first item, which will be the Spear of Shojin. So, boots, longsword, ruby crystal, just a nice little touch of everything we kind of want for right now, except for CDR, but we will acquire that fast since the Spear Shojin is our first item, and our second item second item is the Black Cleaver. Both are 20% CDR, so it puts it at 40 nice and quick. And speaking of which, uh, you guys know this about Nocturne. I'm sure you do. Nocturne's ultimate is a very big part of his kit and what allows him to succeed. So once we hit level 6, uh, we'll be using that, of course, but we also are rocking Presence of Mind and Ultimate Hunter to empower our ultimate in the form of, you know, being available more frequently, because that's really all you need. And having the CDR and these items early will help. And uh, once we actually have our Spear Shoujin especially, we'll be able to very much so utilize the lethal tempo that we have and all the auto attacks and our spells and stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, the spells are useful for Nocturne, but it's really more so about the attack speed. But what I can say is there's been situations where I've been playing with this build and I've gotten off three fears on like a not tanky target, just a target who had like a little bit of uh, 
Gunblade sustain, and I was able to, in this 1v1 against this Fed Diana, get my fear off like three times because of Spear Shoujin. And that's kind of part of why you'll see that in this build. Anyway, out leveling the Jace now, out farming him as well. I'm going to drop the control ward over here since I'm pretty sure that will last. And I'll get a ward over here. And I'm going to see if this Jace thinks I'm gone. I might miss a mini or two, but if he pushes the lane as he is now and doesn't get distracted by me being around, I think he'll actually reset the way back towards me. Because right now it's going to push towards him. So far, he's not doing what I want him to do. So, yeah, he's going to do this. So I'm not going to miss the Siege minion for this. Instead, I'm just going to walk in here. He already used his combo, so I'm just going to go at him here. Spell shielding maybe a little bit early, but yeah. Oh, yeah, it was too early. Because if I didn't do that so early, I could have spell shielded his knockback and actually fought him a lot more than that. It's okay, though. He is getting kind of chunked here. We'll get our crop team potion going. And if we hit level 6 in good timing here, I think we can go for the all-in. Next minion is level 6. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to look to get this minion, Q, R, and just all in with everything we got. He is really respecting me, though. If he was stepping up a little bit more for, like, auto attacks and stuff, I would have already gone. But he's playing it really slow. And I let him hit that shock blast because I was kind of baiting him to try and approach. And we got Pantheon coming through. Let's go ahead and just wait for him to do something. Stun blocked. And we can just walk away. Ooh, maybe. I was hoping to hit uh, Jace with that, but that's okay. But yeah, the Pantheon, if he was smart, he would have broken my spell shield with his, uh... Let's just hit this. Yeah, he's dead. Alright, I'm gonna try and begin my fear on the Pantheon instead. Ignite. Oh, yeah. See, if the Ignite wasn't on me there, the Jace's Ignite was the biggest thing to kill me there. The 136 true damage. If that wasn't there, Pantheon wouldn't have uh, killed me there. I think I should have also been more patient. I think the Pantheon was just waiting there for me to go in, but that's okay. Still in a 2v1. I managed to kill it on top. Got ourselves the uh, Kindle Gem for some extra CDR and HP. And I think we're good like this, actually. Uh, I'm looking towards getting the Ninja Tabby this game. I think uh, playing as Vigar is going to be kind of tricky, you know, having Ninja Tabby. But the reality is, is he can be easily avoided through my spell shield. His only CC is his cage. I only can walk through one of the walls, but that's probably all I need is to walk through one of the walls with my spell shield. And the Kale, I'm kind of counting on us just winning before she's a problem. Because I know her damage is mixed anyways. You can't really build against her regardless. Anyway, the wave's kind of bigger for me than it is for him, so it is going to push. So I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of a hand and just run at this guy. Alright, I've kind of screwed this up so far, but it might be okay because i got the fear still. One more auto attack and then I'll walk away. Yeah, that was bad by me. I could have played that better if I hit my Q. I just wanted to walk at him there because I wanted to pressure in a way that I can keep the pressure flowing. Now I'm just looking to clear the wave and reset. Blocking all that. And this guy's going in way too early. He's going to get himself killed here. Yep. Yeah, because I have lethal tempo, right? So the second the fight begins, I'm just so, so dangerous. Unless he kills me before the lethal tempo really does its part. Now I'm not sure... Oh yeah, Pantheon's dead. So yeah, we're fine. We can just push and maybe get tower plate in here. Alright, maxing that E second. I think if we were going a full-on hit build... Like Blather and King and items like that, Blood Razor. I'd be going with the W Max, but I think for this game, because I want to spam my E as much as possible with Spear Shojin, this will be better for us. So off this tower plate in here, we'll have the money we need for the BF Sword component, but I think we can go for a little bit more. Because, yeah, I mean, Pantheon doesn't have 6 yet. Maybe he'll ult me, but even if he does, I can usually outplay it with my spell shield. Let's just get out of the way of this. I'm going to clear one final wave here and then go back. I'll admit, though, the tower plating is baiting me. Yeah, pretty obviously what Jace is going to do. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Alright, he flashed on me, so I got a little bit scared, I'll admit. But that's okay, we'll just get out. Probably didn't need to flash there, but better safe than sorry is what I'll say on that one. So, okay, got ourselves the BF Sword towards our Spear Shojin. Very important item for us. And when we return to lane, we should have our Ignite. So I'll be able to all in this guy one more time. Afraid of the Dark? I'm not sure about that. I think what I'm afraid of is uh, Kale getting to a late game point in this match. But then again, I don't know, maybe I can perma-fear her throughout her damage output and her ultimate and stuff and still kill her. I also see Gragas on the way, but my range is not quite there. It seems like he knows that, but he's still approaching. Uh, we're almost there. It's at the tower now. Alright, and now I'm in range. And let's cue midair because it looks cool. <laughs> Alright, so there's a little bit of mechanic I want to share with you guys that you may know about, you may not know about, but I think it's kind of neat, is that uh, when you're using your ultimate, uh, it does have an AD ratio. 
right? And to increase your AD ratio, you can just, you know, buy items, or you can use your Q and actually be on top of it. So if you want to maximize damage from your ultimate, use your Q mid-air right before you hit that target. It can be kind of tricky because you're moving so quickly and it'll still come up from wherever you are when you cast Q and your target might be moving and stuff and it might be harder to hit them. But if you can do it, you'll land your ultimate with more damage because you're already on top of your uh, Duskbringer extra AD. And that was what we managed to do just there. Looks kind of awkward, but it does work. And you can see now we're going to get this tower. I can actually use my Q to increase my AD to do the tower faster. And he's already back. Wow, that was quick. I mean, if he goes at me here, he's going to have a rough time. And I think he wants to. I'm just going to let his W expire. And I'm just going to go at him. Like, you're so screwed, dude. You're so very screwed. Scrags is here too. Yeah. <laughs> Completely exploded. Yeah, even if Gregus wasn't there, the Jace was going to lose that trade so hard that he was going to lose this tower by default. But now we have the tower. Oh, hold on. Actually, Pantheon's here. I'm on the way over. Fear off. Spell shit, whatever he's going to throw our way. So I should be patient here, though, because he did have his E going. But I can still go at him now. Oop, actually, let's drop the tower aggro. I think Gragas can clean it up, but I need to get out. Oh, Gragas did clean it up. Yikes. But yeah, if I stay, we just get a double We just get double killed, so let's just leave. Yeah, ultimate's up soon. But not quite. Yeah, that's kind of unlucky. Sorry there, Gragas. Sorry there, man. I wish we could have done that, but it is what it is, unfortunately, on that one. Either way, though, we have our, our Spear Shoujin now, the main item in this build because of how effective it is with your ultimate. You know, there's a lot of champions who can't really utilize Spear Shoujin as much as I wish they could, uh, simply because after they ult, you know, Wukong's a great example. There's a lot of delay between pressing R, finishing your ult, and actually auto-attacking, whereas Nocturne, it's very tough to evade that first auto-attack after your ult, and that is why I like it so much. And I can see what's happening mid here. I'm going to try and help Ari because I do expect her to actually fail to kill Vigar, and I was right in my prediction. If I see Vigar, it's over. I see him getting wrench. Alright, somebody's getting berries. That's Jace. I could go after Jace here, but I don't know where Pantheon is, and I'm not going to suicide in for a full health Jace. Suicide in for a Vigar with buffs, that's a different story. Alright, so we'll clear that wave. Avoid this. And I can kind of just walk extra at him here. Kind of spell shielded early, but I don't think it matters. Because he's feared, and I can just walk him down. We're still on my Duskbringer. And yeah, he just dies. Once your head is Nocturne, it's very tough to lose, to be honest. In a 1v1 anyway, because you are mostly an auto-attacker. But if there's a lot of champions, that's where problems can arise. And we can just walk right through this using our Spell Shield. It's an amazing thing with Nocturne. And actually, let's walk at him again. And let's actually just kill him here. I tried to time my ultimate between an auto-attack so I can maximize the burst in that instance so that I wouldn't tank too many tower shots. And that guy clearly didn't like that. Sucks to be you, chump. But that will be this next top turret. And I say next, but it's actually the first tower of the game. Beautiful. It's the kind of stuff I want to be achieving this match. Alright, keep on pushing. Maximize that ultimate. And let's back it on off. Alright. 86 farm, 6, 1, and 2. Not too bad of a way to come out of the lane phase. I will admit the farm is a little bit lackluster, but since we're just going around the map of killing people, I'm not exactly expecting great farm. I'm just expecting to beat Jace in the farm, and we are doing exactly that. Now let's go ahead here and get ourselves uh, the Black Cleaver components. And I'll replace my control ward, since I'm pretty sure that control ward I have is really just not necessary anymore. My ultimate isn't up for another 40 seconds, but if there is a fight and I get like a takedown or two, because of presence of mind... I think I'll have my ultimate soon enough to be very useful. And this Elder, or this Infernal Dragon is such a huge priority, especially while Jace is catching up and getting from my top turret. We want to get this dragon. Alright, Pike's looking for the engagement of the Bard here. He's going to find it. The stun isn't going to land. I'm expecting the magical journey any moment now. Just a matter of when. I'm just going to go after this Scuttle Crab here because I think Bard's going to get away. I'm not going to... I don't have ult anyway, so it doesn't matter. Alright, start the dragon up. Ultimate in 10 seconds, so we are definitely looking for a fight. I think my spell shield blocks dragon hits, but I think I might have mistimed it. Either way, there is the dragon. Uh, the Kale's doing her own thing. Let's go ahead and just immediately alter here. She's just overextended, so it's just so free. And there is the kill. No one even got an assist. That is how powerful we are against that no boots <laughs> rage blade Kale. All right. So, ooh, I thought I was gonna need spell shield that. Guess not. And this guy's just dead long before he can even alt himself, and we will get some damage to the tower. The damage on the tower will also hit me. And push the wave. And I don't know what Jace is doing. It looks like he went mid. I thought he'd be getting my tower. 
It looks like we will get the second, no, third tower of the game here. And we have Black Cleaver when we want it. I'm going to try to walk towards Ari here, because I think they're going to try and cut her off. And maybe we can cut them off. Yep. Not get caught by that stun. Oh, very nice Gragasol. It's going to fear off here. Oh, this guy is going to flash. I'm just going to kind of play this slow here, since I am kind of low. Yep, they're definitely going to want to focus me here, since I do have a bounty on my head. Oh, fuck. Okay. So I am going to die here. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think my spell shield was down when I needed it for there for the spear. So my thought, my thought process, while flawed, was, well, if I can get my ult off, maybe I can hide the vision enough so that he misses. Since if he can't see me, he has to shoot blind, right? But yeah, that was a waste of my ultimate. But as you can see now, because of Presence of Mind and Ultimate Hunter, we have it fully stacked. We are very easily able to uh, require our ultimate, uh, reacquire our ultimate very quickly. The cooldown's really short. All right, so next item after Black Cleaver is going to be the Phantom Dancer. Now, <laughs> not only is this item just suitably good for Nocturne because of the themes and stuff, you know, Nocturne is probably as close to a Phantom as you really come, except for maybe Karthus. But uh, with that all said and done, uh, yeah, it's just a great item for us. The only thing we don't really need is the crit, but who who cares, right? An extra little bit of crit every now and again? No problems with that. But yeah, it's just good for stalking our prey, right? Basic attack at champion gives us some extra ghosty move speed. You know, Nocturne's also like a ghost, so that's good there. But uh, it's also the extra shield, so we can make those clutch plays and not die. And I'll farm some of this here, since our farm is kind of low this game. We're playing well, but we could be farming a lot better. And I'm going to look towards getting the Rift Herald now that we've gotten the Dragon out of the way with the Gragas. And uh, Jace might overextend, and if we see him, we can probably just kill him. But the priority here is definitely the Rift Herald. Move this here, and yeah, I'm just going to ult the... Oh, I can't see him. Now I can Okay, I missed my Q. This is really bad. But we can maybe still kill the Pantheon. It's going to wait for his E to expire. Yep, he's dead. And now we're on the Jace. And he's dead next. And yeah, we're just kind of, kind of overrun here. So I could not have butchered my mechanics any more than I did in that fight. I tried to use my Q on the Jace because I expected him to run down the lane like anybody would in that situation. Little did I know Pantheon was in the brush. I focused Pantheon while his E was going because I was expecting it to expire. It actually was the empowered E, so it, it lasted an extra uh, whole second. So another mistake by me. Yeah, so I kind of got Gregus killed on that one and didn't do a great job cleaning up. But you know what? In the end, we're ahead enough. It doesn't matter. And our ultimate's already back up. I love it. Presence of mind, baby. Good stuff. All right, so let's return to the top lane here. And I just want to honestly maximize my farm for the next little bit. Uh, the Rift Herald is still on the map, but it's not going to last. Uh, looks like team's kind of running it down here. Maybe Pike can clean up, but it's not looking good. He already used his ultimate and did not get the kill. Yeah, that's unlucky. All right, but yeah, I think if um, we go for the Rift Herald, that might be the way to go here. Then again, we don't really need it. It's just, you know, extra gold, extra XP. The objective we can take from them, make sure they don't get... Yeah, the way it's crashed on me here, so this is perfect for me for right now. Oh, I didn't spell shield in time. I really thought I did. Those shock loss combos, they do come quick. Alright. Yeah, I'm not going to go after Jace for right now. So I can actually spell shield just like the dragon. I can spell shield the Rift Herald hits. Let's just grab that one. And I think the Pantheon might just walk into us here. Yep. This poor fool. This poor guy just gets insta-gibbed. Nice. Alright, Jason on the corner too. Their team is bottom lane. So we have two choices here. Do we want to push mid to pull them towards us and kind of out-rotate? Or do we want to collapse? I feel like the better play might be to push first and then collapse after we take up some people on the way. Like this Jace. Then again, I'm not ulting for him. Maybe I should have. Or maybe I should go for this Vigar. No, nope, Vigar's already dead. Yeah, I should have ulted the Jace. I wanted to hold my ultimate for the Vigar, since I've just killed this Jace so many times by now. That was my mistake. But uh, the next dragon's in two seconds. We can just go get that instead. It's all good. I'll give you a Q, but I don't quite have that level of mobility. Okay, and off of that, I think I kind of just want to go right back top lane. I see the wave is beginning to build up. And I, again, want to keep farming better than I have been. My farm's really bad. 
I mean, I'm beating their Jace, but barely. And that's <laughs> that goes to show something, if anything. Because this Jace is not exactly having the greatest game. But I can farm this while I rotate. Since Ari's bottom anyway. In fact, they're actually fighting. I should get down there. Jace is not quite caught. Uh, I think I can save Gregus here. I'm going to try and alt onto the Pantheon as soon as he lands. But then again... He's already dead. Where did that bard go? Get me out of the way. Alright, I can't quite do what I wanted to do here. I was looking for the bard and the pantheon, and I couldn't quite choose, and the bard went out of vision, so unfortunate for me. That's fine. Oh, hold on. The flash charm? We could just... Okay, never mind. I can't do anything. <laughs> oh, the hook? This fool's just dead. Well, I kind of messed up our uh, pike on that one, but that's okay. This guy's dead. Let's flash in our tower range. Oh, clutch. And our ultimate's already back up in 20 seconds. God, I love this build. Kale's put in work, but... Ooh, the hook. She's definitely dead now. The stun is going to be there, too, during her ultimate. So she should not get these kills. Very nice. All right. Got ourselves the Phantom Dancer. We can sell this. Wait. Wow, that sells for so much money? I didn't realize that. We have an extra BF sword now towards our GA. So we can go even more kamikaze. Let's go ahead and grab red, actually. I hope Gregus doesn't mind. Yeah, pretty good game for us here so far. It's just a shame I'm not farming so well, but I keep talking about that, so I'll just be quiet and just do better. <laughs> We're farming champions, that's my excuse. Well, a few extra crits there, nice. But yeah, the red's pretty great for uh, Nocturne, just so we can slow them down and burn them as we chase them down. really wish Vayne didn't take that. Oh, there's Bard. I don't know if anyone else is going to come and help this chase, though, so let's go ahead and go after him. Cut him off with the Dustbringer. Yeah, you're just very dead. There's just no chance for him, really. Although, I don't really like being ignited, because it means I can't sustain as hard. I'm going to get stunned here, I think. Oh, yeah, I am. Alright, this did not go as I hoped. Alright, so I was looking to actually use my W to block the Bard stun against this, but he actually ended up auto-attacking me and slowing me instead. And then I completely mistimed my, my W with the Pantheon stun. So yeah, I just I royally just screwed that one up. My team's gonna clean up the bard though, so at least somebody goes down their team. Gragas got Kale as well. Yeah, this Kale's just not really understanding uh, her limits when it comes to where she can stand safely. Yeah, we can work towards the stopwatch here actually, because uh, that'll be good to pop that active when we're in danger. Right, Pantheon's going on to ban here. That was actually a lot of damage. For a 5 and 7 Pantheon, I wouldn't expect that. Oh, good charm. I kind of want to give it, these guys the Golden Garp. If you guys don't know what the uh, Golden Garp is, there's a few champions you can pull it off, but it's basically where you use an ultimate that is unstoppable or like will continue what it's doing despite you going golden. So if you use the Golden Garp with, Pan uh, with uh, Nocturne, they might have fixed it, but you used to be able to use your ultimate, and when you're, like, about to hit them, you just press Hourglass, and your ultimate would still do damage, but you're golden when you arrive, which is hilarious. Speaking of hilarious, let's go ahead and one-shot this Pantheon. No! He went right on my vision, just, like, the second I went for it. Alright, well, we'll just kill the Bard then, I guess. That sucks, man. I was gonna kill Pantheon and then come back around for Bard, but I guess if I went for Pantheon, Bard would have probably just magical journeyed away or something. That's fine. 35-second cooldown, you know? Presence of Mind, Ultimate Hunter. It makes this build work. Amongst other things. And Ari's making the moves. I'm thinking I can push this tower, or the lane to the tower. Oh wow, these crits are happening in really inconvenient moments when I'm trying to kill the siege minions. Unlucky. Alright, Jace and Pantheon both appear to be down there, so this should be a free tower for me. Using our Q to accelerate, but also give us ourselves that extra AD. How much AD is it? 60. That's quite a lot. Like, look at that. It's already gone. And looks like that will be the surrender vote. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the game here today. If you did, make sure to drop that like rating. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. All that good stuff. And let's check out the post-game stats. Oh, I got a bug splat. Uh, can it maybe still show me the post-game stats? I think it will, actually. I think it just needs a moment. I think that bug splat error isn't really accurate. All right, so Greg has played great for us. I'm going to give him the GG here. He ganked very nicely when we needed him.
Okay. So we got ourselves the S on the Nocturne. Ari got one as well. Awesome stuff. Uh, let's look at the damage charts. So we didn't quite have the most damage. I'm not really surprised. That game only went for 25 minutes-ish. Uh, the Ari was, of course, our burst mage with m multiple AoE spells. So it makes sense that she would, while also having a good score in her own right, have the most damage. But for Nocturne, having the second most by this uh, amount compared to like Jace and Pantheon and other champions, I think it's pretty sweet. So that is the damage there. Let's look at damage taken. We actually took the most damage while only dying four times. I mean, some pe some teammates died only three times, so it's not really much to brag about there. What else is kind of important to see here? Uh, Self-healing, maybe? Or how about true damage? We had the most true damage. Cool. Uh, or self-healing. Am I looking and not seeing it for some reason? Ally healing. Or, sorry, ally healing. There it is. Sweet. Oh, no, healing done. Here we go. Perfect. Yeah, so Gragas has got a passive for healing, so he's going to do really well in that department. Same with Pike. But you can see that with Nocturne, because of our passive, we actually healed more than the Pike did. Now, maybe we just used our passive more effectively than he did, but generally speaking, you would expect champions like Pike and Ari to sustain a hell of a whole lot more than Nocturne, but maybe that's just my perspective. Anyways, that's the game here today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. A nice little off-meta talk top nocturne build that i think is actually super good super strong super fun even too and uh, you know you're kind of used to seeing nocturne jungle i was considering making a video of that but i've done like two or three of those by now maybe even four and it's always the same stuff this is different it's new and i like it so hope you enjoyed it too and i'll see you guys on the next one peace out